Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 30th of June and the end of Microsoft's FY23. So congrats to the end of the financial year. It's a really quick update this week because it's the end of the financial year. So I think everyone's kind of taking it easy. I expect it'd be quiet for the next couple of weeks, but there are some actually pretty nice updates this week. As always, I have the chapters. So you can jump to a particular update and new videos this week. I dived into Azure Container Storage. This shifts how we think about providing durable storage for our containers and moving away from maybe limitations of the infrastructure type resources and how they used to bind to the nodes in the node pool that hosted the pods, makes it more scalable, faster, new capabilities. So I explored what that service is and how it works. And I played around with Bing Chat. What is it and how is it working? How is this GPT-4 powered large language model working with current data compared to, hey, what it was trained on? So I explore the mechanisms in how it works and then some of what you can do with it. So that, that was actually pretty fun to play around with. So on to what's new on the networking side. So I'm using App Gateway. Remember that is the regional layer seven balancing solution, I can now have common port listeners. And what that means is I may have a internal private front end and a public front end. And before those listeners couldn't use the same port. So I'd have to use some abnormal, unnatural port for one of those because they couldn't use the same port. Well now both public and private listeners can use the same port number. So that's gonna give me the ability to just use maybe the standard port and not have to do that more strange thing on one of them. So it's gonna make it much easier to configure and serve the traffic for both internal clients and my internet public clients. And the regional web application firewall that I can add on top of App Gateway, remember App Gateway is regional, and then we have the regional web application firewall that works with that now has the DRS 2.1. So that's based off the Open Web Application Security Project core rule set 3.3.2. And what this does is it breaks it down now. If we actually go and have a quick look at this, if we scroll down to actually DRS 2.1. So it's now 17 different rule groups and you could actually go and dive in and see what these are if you were interested but it adds protections developed by the Microsoft Threat Intelligence team in addition to some of those core rule set components. So you can actually go and dive into that. Carry on with what's new. So on the storage side, Azure Net App Files now has double encryption in preview. Now what this enables me to do is I can have multiple layers of my encryption. So I can have this configured at the capacity pool at creation time. So I set it when I create the capacity pool and I say, hey, I want double encryption. So what it's then gonna do is have a hardware based encryption, i.e. encrypted SSD drives, and then a software encrypted layer. So the hardware encryption that's using physical storage, FIPS 140-2 certified drives, and then the software is at that volume level and I can pick, is that a Microsoft, i.e. platform managed key or a customer managed key? Now I have to use this with standard networking features for the NetApp. It will introduce a slight performance degradation. Now, what that is, is gonna vary depending on the type of workload profile. It may be a percent, it may be a bit higher, but that's something you could experiment with and see, but if you have those requirements for that enhanced levels of encryption at rest, remember it's already encrypted in transit based on the protocols, but at rest, I can now choose to have that double encryption. And then Elastic SAN has some updates. Remember Elastic SAN is that iSCSI based target that is now available in Azure. So if I have my very high performance workloads and I wanna be able to use that iSCSI using my network connectivity, hey, I can use Elastic SAN. And what these sets of updates is providing is there's more regions. So I think it's 12 regions this is available in now instead of three. And four of those support zone redundant storage, i.e. the copies of my data is spread over the three availability zones in that region. It supports multi-path IO. So I can have multi-session connectivity 
to that target that's gonna aggregate those sessions and connections together to get an overall higher throughput of that. So if I do need that really high throughput, I could now use that multi-path IO to have multiple uh, different sessions, but aggregated together for an overall much, much higher throughput. It does integrate with Azure Container Storage, which I created a video on this week as one of the back-end durable storage targets for that service. There's also easier migration, not just to Elasticsand, but other Azure storage workloads through a partnership with Cirrus Data. That's free to you, but it's as part of their storage migration solution. So, hey, I've got on-prem data. I can move it to a number of Azure targets, one of them being the Elasticsand. And then miscellaneous. Conditional access is that boundary around all authorizations when I'm using Azure AD. And there's different ways to configure my conditional access, but one of them is I target particular cloud applications. And what they've done is they've added a new Microsoft Admin Portals cloud application that I can target. So if we jump over to this really quickly, if I'm, I'm in my entry portal, I'm in protect and secure conditional access policies, and I'll quickly create a new policy, so I can say, hey, I want to target a particular app. And it's actually showing it right here as the first one, Microsoft Admin Portals. So what this is targeting is the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, the Exchange Admin Center, the Azure Portal, the Microsoft Entra Admin Center, and Security and Microsoft Purview Compliance Portals. So it's targeting my interaction with the portal. Now this is different from the existing Microsoft Azure Management. Microsoft Azure Management, maybe I'll show that as well, just so we can see the two of them. So if I now search for um, Azure Management instead, so we see this one, this works in a very different way. So what Microsoft Azure Management is doing, it's the Azure Resource Manager, that control plane to Azure. So if I was using the portal, because it's ARM, if I was using PowerShell, if I was using the Azure CLI, if I was using the portal, if I was using Data Lake, App Insights, Log Analytics, DevOps, anything that's trying to go through the Azure control plane would be impacted by Microsoft Azure Management because it's impacting the underlying ARM control plane. But this new one, the new one is only targeting the portals and not the underlying resources. So the Azure Resource Manager API is not impacted by this. It's only the portals. So essentially I could set restrictions on the portals, but this would not impact my interactions through PowerShell, through CLI, through deploying a template through my DevOps. Maybe, maybe I want to stop people using the portal. I wanna make them go and use DevOps. Now you have to consider if I went that path, what about in break glass scenarios? Sure, I don't want people to change things through the portal, but maybe they need to go and view things. So maybe I have certain exceptions if you're in a certain group, which maybe I could elevate up to using PIM for group memberships for a break glass. Actually opens up some really cool scenarios to limit portal access, but hey, I can still do things the proper way. Um, so that is now available in preview. And that is it. So it was a quick update. I hope that was useful. And again, happy end of FY23 for those companies that split mid-year. Until the next video, take care.